Yes, Richard. Um, this little talk should cover uh, one of your um, um, writings, your mm -hmm. a little booklet which I admire a lot. It is uh, yes, please show it, and it's something really for everyone, I would say. <laughs> yeah, something for everyone. Yeah, I, the, I called it uh, Mao's Red Book of Homeopathy. Yeah. You know, the, your back pocket manual for everything homeopathic on the road or, yeah. or even at home. So, uh, yeah. so the concept came a long time ago. I wrote the first edition of the book in 2013 and it was called uh, The Natural Medicine Guide for Travel and Home. Mm. Having traveled for so many years, lived in Africa, lived in India and other places and been around, uh, there was a need, there was a gap in the market. Uh, there were different homeopathic books for travel, but mm. there's one, a big blue book uh, written by Colin Lessel, but it was huge. I mean, mm. it was more of a manual and more of a resource mm. than it was an actual book for the road. Mm. You're not going to put that book in your backpack. Mm. So I saw both from a market point of view and also just from an interest point of view that there was a need. Mm -hmm. So that led me to begin to write the book, uh, which was published in 2013. Uh, through uh, my colleague Harry van der Zee and Homeolinks mm -hmm. and uh, and yeah and the thing in the end though because I did all this research is that the book became bigger than mm -hmm. I originally thought mm -hmm. so the original book was a bit more like that mm -hmm. and uh, this book actually came out of that and mm -hmm. so two years later I wrote the first edition of this book called the essential natural health guide mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. one of the question is why didn't you call it a homeopathy book and uh, so, because it's predominantly homeopathy, even though there's other natural medicines included in, in, in it. Mm -hmm. And the reason really was, is that, you know, homeopathy is one word and it also, mm -hmm. it, 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 people don't understand what it is. Mm -hmm. And also it has a lot of uh, a bad rap now because mm -hmm. of the uh, agenda of certain people against homeopathy. Mm -hmm. I wanted a book that one, it allowed me to explore what homeopathy could do for travel and home in the most precise possible way mm. to communicate it to people so that it would give people this knowledge mm. and to act again as a bridge so that actually mm. a whole new group of people mm. potentially interested in natural mm. medicine and or travel together mm. could find out about how homeopathy mm. can be used. Mm -hmm. And I think for all the amazing work done over a long time by many, 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 mm. many, many homeopaths, homeopathy is still challenging to communicate, to really mm -hmm. give the basics so that it can make this information accessible, so that the learning curve isn't too steep in the beginning. Well, what is your you know? secret receipt? <laughs> the secret receipt, you mean the secret method? Method to, to make it concise and... Uh, I really wanted it to work for everyone. So basically at the back you will see a list in this small book there's 43 remedies uh, or 52 remedies in the bigger one there's 100 remedies and mm -hmm. it clearly says the conditions they use for the main symptoms mm -hmm. that you actually will indicate this remedy for so that people know that one remedy can be used for more than one condition and then relationship of remedy so if you're thinking mm -hmm. of this remedy you think of that remedy. Mm -hmm. And then each chapter is categorized according to a, a system to make it more accessible. Mm -hmm. So injuries and traumas is one, mm -hmm. uh, uh, tropical diseases is two. And I really mm -hmm. wanted to introduce people who are traveling to India and Asia, for example, mm -hmm. what normal tropical diseases you will face, mm -hmm. what are unusual ones, mm -hmm. what ones are you never going to face, but which ones should you really know about? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, for example, how many people know about schistosomiasis? Yeah. You know, where, which is endemic yeah. in Africa yeah. uh, and ne is nearly as much as malaria, you know. Yeah. And then obviously we have malaria, we have dengue, we have typhoid. Yeah. And in the bigger book, I went much more into more exotic diseases, African sleeping sickness, lesh leshmaniasis, mm -hmm. and e even talking about the plague and, and talking yeah. about different conditions. And mm -hmm. I wanted to give people who travel more knowledge. And this isn't so much for homeopaths, but for the public. That if you're traveling to Asia and you're thinking, mm. oh, what vaccines do I need to get? Mm. You go to the website of the WHO, the CDC mm. or the UK mm. government, and they basically say everything. Mm. And if you're going to a fancy hotel in Phuket, Thailand mm. or even India mm. now, you know, your likelihood mm. of getting sick is less than it is walking in the streets of London virtually. So it's important to know and to have information yeah. about how to balance it. Yeah. So and I wanted to give knowledge about vaccines, their benefits. Mm. and perhaps their, 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 their potential dangers, mm. and also what other options are available if you choose to do mm. it along with, or mm. you choose to do it instead of. So the bigger mm. book has a whole chapter 
uh, on that subject. So it's a differentiated a view on, exactly. on yeah. which place you really go and not all and everything. Yeah? Exactly. Yeah. And I categorize yeah. three levels of travel. You know, travel yeah. with low risk, medium risk, high risk. Oh, it's like yeah. if I was to go and work in the middle of the DRC in the mm. jungle and I was going to be there a month and mm. I knew the area was malaria mm. infested, I mm. might seriously consider taking conventional malaria mm. prevention. Mm. It works. Mm. We, we need to be realistic about mm. the risks involved mm. and the options. Mm. However, if you live in Africa, as I've done for eight years, you mm. don't take malaria prevention. You can't. It's not recommended even. Mm. It's, it makes no sense. Mm. So I wanted to give a more nuanced mm. approach to the mm. challenges and also the, 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 and the options. Mm. And so there's a lot on that. In the bigger book, there's a whole section on Lyme disease and tick bite diseases, which, as we know, in North America and now parts of Europe is mm. endemic, mm. is one of the biggest chronic health issues we are potentially facing. Mm. So I really wanted to share the homeopathic perspective on that and mm. give basic information to know how people can actually find out whether or not they have Lyme disease, because this is a very challenging area. Yes, and I read you already have covered the C disease. We don't <laughs> name it. <laughs> like, yes, this. Well, we can name it. Yes. yes, well, basically, this is a new edition, which yeah. uh, I've just done by print on demand, which allowed me now to add a bit of information. And mm -hmm. so I add some what I will call nutrition uh, and mm -hmm. other forms of prevention against immune enhancement against mm -hmm. you know a coronaviruses and other mm -hmm. flu viruses let's mm -hmm. not just say it's one about one it's about the broader spectrum yeah. of how to maintain your immunity yeah. and I, I use a book actually called the truth about COVID-19 by Joseph McCullough and Ronnie mm -hmm. Cummins the American authors uh, which lay out some of the natural medicine options that people should know about and some of the other even conventional options people should know about in this time when this information is being uh, 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 suppressed. So I thought this is important. So I felt it was important to produce a new version of the book. And mm. my original intention, you know, was from a marketing point of view, was to have it in every bookstore, in every airport. So mm. people could see that and go, oh, mm. that could be useful. Mm. And even to have kits to go with it. So mm. the point was to bring homeopathy to the public, to mm. empower people to have more knowledge mm. of it. And in so doing, uh, spread the good word, as it mm. were. And, that, and I call it natural health because it's not just about homeopathy. Yeah, it's about good. natural mm. health care and about options that you can yeah. take for your own health and yeah. the empowerment that that can give you. And in this time, I think it's as pertinent and needed mm. as ever. So, so this, this also comes from your own experience, I mm -hmm. suppose. So mm -hmm. when you travel, you have seen quite a lot of uh, difficult diseases, tropical yeah. diseases yeah. or unusual diseases or even um, acute diseases where you are not, in hosp not near a hospital. Or, so yeah. we would be interested in having some small cases. Maybe you remember yeah. one of those impressive or... Um, <clears throat> cases which have been in your memory, these are ma mainly, um, you learn a lot of, of these situations yeah. also. Yeah, you mm -hmm. do, and both in an acute and chronic way, you, you have to learn to work on your feet. You have to be yeah. able to, you, you don't have a computer program, you can't think about it, you yeah. have someone there, you have to find a remedy for chronic and acute diseases, and a couple of cases in, in uh, Ghana, I was working out in a rural area, we had a little hospital, in fact, and we even had some con a conventional nurse working there sometimes because mm. it was part of the larger project. Mm. And we had a homeopathic clinic. We even had a little hospital room mm. where people could come. And there were times that happened where, you know, middle of the night, someone came, mm. a woman on the back of a, of a, of a, of a little motorbike mm. in the bush, and this woman's rolling in agony on the floor, you know, and mm. you, you don't know. So you, bet, you just put them on the bed and you observe, mm. and you have to prescribe within five minutes. And... Uh, mm. I had three very similar cases like that, and mm -hmm. one of them, we just, uh, you know, gave colocin straight away, you know, and, uh, you know, because she was a classic doubled up, I didn't even know what it was, mm -hmm. but within within a minute, you put the, the tablet mm -hmm. under the tongue, and then she's asleep. Mm -hmm. It worked that quickly, and then mm -hmm. had another case, very similar case, and uh, and it came after eating something wrong, and again, Nux vomica uh, mm -hmm. was, was the remedy. Immediately, it worked. Mm -hmm. So what would you do? How do would you differentiate? It was a different. It was not doubling up. It was yeah. With with the Nux vomica one, yeah. it was uh, I can't remember. It was the extre extreme contractions ah. and spasms uh, mm -hmm. happening. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. with with the pain and mm -hmm. uh, and the contortions that happen with mm -hmm. that. 
And, um, and then another case, in fact, it was kafea. It took me three remedies to get the right remedy. She was mm -hmm. restlessness with pain, weeping with pain, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think I, I gave bryonia first of all, and that didn't mm -hmm. work. I gave another remedy, it didn't work. You wait five minutes, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And then kafea, and again, immediately. Was, what is also an abdominal acute? It was an abdominal oh, acute. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You would think of uh, China eh, from that family. Yeah. Kofea, yeah. of course. Yeah. You, you, If you drink too much coffee, you get some, yeah, exactly. some people get uh, yeah. difficulty with their stomach. Yeah, also, yeah. Two rubrics, restlessness with pain and, and, and weeping with pain, you know, because it was just the pain, the excitement, the overstimulation. And, see, yeah. and uh, so mm. those were three cases, but there were many, 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 many others, you know, mm. both acute and really chronic. I mean, with Harry, we, we had to work on some malaria cases, mm. you, you know, using different remedies. And one woman, mm. she had actually... Uh, uh, you know, would always be in hospital with convulsions, with malaria. I mean, she'd had that three, four times, and we, we prevented that. It didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, um, mm -hmm. so yeah. And it shows you that in those acute situations, there's a lot that homeopathy can do, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, good. yeah. So, Is there any remedy or indication that you found in your research and maybe experience, which is not so much known, which you could just tell mm. people? Any indication which you have found very reliable mm -hmm. emergency situation is there anything what you found is gosh i'm just trying to think yeah. what 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 comes up i mean um, many things i think just yeah sometimes um, it would be sometimes you think oh this is something i have experienced myself so many times mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Gosh, nothing comes to mind. Nothing I mean, specific. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I think if you again look at China, which is interesting in terms of, yeah. of, of, of anything to do with malaria, and, and malaria yeah. is such a part of the sort of the backdrop. So, but yeah. China is used mainly in more chronic consequences of malaria than in, than in the acute. In the acute, we're looking at aconite belladonna, ipecac, nux vomica, and uh, and. Uh, Artemisia annua, which is one of the newer medicines, which is an interesting one, which can be used prophylactically in a tea format, and it also can be used in the, in the, in the treatment, both herbally and homeopathically, yeah. and at the same time. And some of what I was looking at more in, in, in an African context is how you can actually use both the herbal medicines, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and the, the great one being neem, for example, and Artemisia. Neem, you can use, again, a bit like Artemisia, mm -hmm. as a broad-spectrum anti anti-bacterial, yeah. anti-viral, yeah, anti-parasitical medicine. These are powerful medicines mm. that can be used in that way. Mm. And uh, yeah, and I think even now in, in, the, in the sea times, I mean that people are using Artemisia in Madagascar. This mm. is something that needs to be looked at more. And yeah. Uh, uh, yeah so. I remember uh, meeting Elton a colleague from Nigeria mm -hmm. and uh, we were in um, Kizumu and which is a lot of malaria there and he said well look this tree and he, he showed me the tree yeah. the neem tree which yeah. is everybody can yeah. see it and yeah. and he said from generation she lives in the delta region of uh, Nigeria so they know about malaria and all these things and, yeah. and he said well this is uh, very important to treat malaria yeah to prevent also so I, I started yeah. taking these uh, powders mm -hmm. um, And yeah, this is good to to keep in mind that there's a lot of knowledge in traditional medicine in those countries. Yeah. And we are sometimes too um, haughty mm -hmm. and, and think uh, we have to impose new things there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's good to have this, to bridge this and uh, to connect it with the traditional yeah. healers and their knowledge. I think yeah. this is a good... Um, direction to introduce uh, help or to, to give some help yeah. or to, to to say there's homeopathy which will even save these substances if they yeah. get to know about homeopathy that the mindset the thinking is very similar yeah yeah exactly exactly yeah and there's Otini, for example there's a substance called warburgia salutaris mm -hmm. which is the south african uh, species of the warburgia which is also found in east africa mm -hmm. and this is another extremely broad, broad spectrum medicine used yeah, by too. all the traditional mm -hmm. healers and so mm -hmm. Barbara is now using it a lot for mm. broad spectrum conditions, chest conditions, mm. stomach conditions, in, in a really interesting mm. way, and, and developing some really clinical 
good clinical evidence about this remedy. And so, so what kind of remedy is that? Where, where does it belong to? Ah, uh, well, it originates, there's Warburgia salutaris and Warburgia ugandiensis, which okay. is the East African version yeah. of it. I don't know so much about the okay. botanical classification of it, uh, but it's ubiquitous, well, it used to be ubiquitously grown there, I but see. now it's becoming extinct. So part of Barbara's mm -hmm. work in Eswatini mm -hmm. and in South Africa mm -hmm is redeveloping the Warburgia plants and reforesting certain areas mm -hmm. in the region with Warburgia. So mm -hmm. we're re replenishing uh, uh, the land with Warburgia. So, uh, yeah. yeah, so there's a lot yeah. there. And, uh, the tr and in Africa, you know, there's so much tr traditional use of, of these medicines, mm -hmm. but it's being devalued. And as Western medicine, yeah. you know, is now imposing yeah. itself more uh, uh, broadly in, in many cultures, you yeah. know, the, the middle class and the, 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 the intelligentsia, if you want, are adopting mm -hmm. the Western model of medicine and diminishing and devaluing the traditional mm -hmm. medicine. Mm -hmm. That being said, it's still extremely broadly mm -hmm. used and accepted within, within most mm -hmm. rural societies, mm -hmm. everywhere you go. It is the medicine that's used. Now we, so. we went into politics again a little so, bit, <laughs> um, but this uh, little guide, um, yeah. let's hope um, we are able to travel that much in future. <laughs> That's the so, question. Uh, we yeah. see this is still a big question yeah. in these new times. Yeah? yeah. But I think for bridging cultures, for bringing people together, we need to meet each other and see each other in yeah. their yeah. Uh, own culture. Yeah. So thank you very much. Pleasure. for staying here in my house which is <laughs> one example of bridging cultures yeah i love it and it's uh, getting a rare occasion to meet in person and hug each other so like right. thank I'm you happy to be here thank yeah. very much yeah. yes Good. and we, we we stay and work together too. thank you great thanks so much <laughs>